Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be doing an in-depth comparison review of the Barrel SLR versus M4 Mini 14 combo to see which Titan is king. Now in today's hey, video, we'll do it in two sections. We'll do the Barrel versus the M4, then we'll go over to the SLR versus Mini 14. Now for the assault rifles, we'll take a look at a number of things. We'll look at damage per bullet, each weapon's rate of fire, their subsequent damage per second, the weapon's bullet velocity, and how many attachment slots each weapon has. And we'll do some comparisons with the recoil patterns with different grips and attachments to see which is better in which scenario. Now, starting with this chart here, the damage per bullet is one of the most important stats when looking at any weapon comparisons. And this tells you how much damage each bullet is going to do to an unarmored target. Now, we're going to break the damage per bullet down for each weapon into a shots per kill to see how many shots it takes to kill an enemy based on what kind of gear or armor they're wearing. So looking at this new chart, we're gonna have four different columns to take a look at. Now again, we have the barrel on top, M4 on bottom. Column number one is gonna be a no gear target. Column number two is a level one helmet and vest. Column three is a level two helmet and vest. And column four is a level three helmet and vest. Now what's interesting to point out here is the barrel beats the M4 in literally every category. So with a no gear target, it only takes one headshot compared to two at the M4. With a level one gear target, it only takes three chest shots as opposed to four chest shots on the M4. A level two gear target only takes four chest shots as opposed to five on the M4. And a level three gear target only takes five chest shots as opposed to six on the M4. Now there is a small caveat here on the level one gear and level three gear where you see the little asterisk next to how many chest shots it takes. That's because that's only considering if you hit the target in the upper chest. If you hit the target in the mid chest or lower abdomen section, it actually takes the same amount of shots to kill as the M4. All right, now next up, we need to look at the damage per second or the time to kill for each weapon. And first to understand that we have to figure out each weapon's rate of fire. So to do that, we'll have each weapon shoot a 30 round magazine. And we can see that the M4 and the barrel actually have about the same rate of fire, about 720 rounds per minute. Now that's actually in the barrel's favor because the barrel already has a higher damage per bullet than the M4. So since they have the same rate of fire, we can do a simple little calculation, the damage per bullet times the rate of fire divided by 60, and that'll give us our damage per second. Now the barrel is the clear winner here with 528 damage per second, whereas the M4 only has 480 damage per second. That's a quite significant increase on how much damage that weapon can put out in a short amount of time. Now that's gonna bring us over to our time to kill for each weapon. Now, if we look at a level two gear target, we can see that both weapons actually perform the same when shooting headshots and upper chest shots. The big differentiator here is the lower chest and abdomen shots where the barrel is about a 10th of a second faster over the M4. And this is because of its higher bullet damage it's able to punch through that armor a bit harder than the M4 can. Now, ironically, on the level three gear, it's actually flip-flopped where the time to kill for headshots is the same, but the next shot is faster on the barrel and the upper chest shot is faster on the barrel. However, the lower chest and mid abdomen section are what and what pretty much the same time as the M4. All right, now I think up to this point, it's been no secret as to which weapon was gonna be stronger in terms of the damage or time to kill. But now let's take a look at the usability of each weapon. So let's look at the bullet velocity number one, which I found something pretty interesting here. And then we'll look at the weapon's recoil patterns, how they control with no attachments and then with all the kitted attachments. Now what's interesting here is uh, PUBG Gamepedia, it's a fan-made Wikipedia run site for PUBG stats, shows that the M4's bullet velocity is a little bit faster than the barrel's, but in practice, and I'm on the training grounds, the bullet velocity for the barrel actually seems faster. I don't know if it's an animation delay discrepancy, but the barrel's bullet seems to hit the target a little bit faster than the M4 in both close and long range. Now, while this isn't a huge difference, it does mean the barrel excels at longer range tap fire and sprays because your bullet is gonna get there a bit faster, but also in terms of last hit for your enemy, if you and your target are both one shot, and you shoot your weapons at the same time, assuming no network discrepancies, 
the barrel's bullet is going to hit and apply damage and kill the other target before that enemy's bullet hits you. So that's another reason why the barrel is just a little bit better in my opinion. All right, now let's take a look at the weapon recoil comparisons for each weapon. Now, this portion of the video is not meant to tell you which grip is best. I've done a complete guide to all attachments in PUBG, how they work and which ones are best for which weapons. I'll link that in the description below and also in the top corner of this video. This section just to give you a comparison over each grip to see which one you should be picking up for your weapon depending on your play style. In my opinion, the most universal grip for both is going to be the half grip. But if I'm picking up the barrel, I like the vertical grip on it. And on the M4, honestly, the angle grip or the half grip are probably going to be your best friends here. All right, guys, so that covers the assault rifle comparison. Let me know in the comments below which weapon you're leaning more towards. If any of this information kind of changed your mind about which one you prefer, I think it's still pretty close in terms of which one you should be picking up. They both have their clear pros and cons. The barrel is the you know stronger weapon, faster to kill, but the M4 is more consistent and easier to control, especially if you don't have all the attachments that you need for it. So let me know what you guys are thinking. But now let's go ahead and move on to the DMR. So the Mini 14 and the SLR, which the Mini 14 recently saw a damage increase and the SLR saw a nerf to its recoil control. All right, now we'll start off doing a similar breakdown to the DMR. So let's look at the damage per bullet, the magazine capacity, bullet velocity, and attachment slots for each weapon. Now, starting with the damage per bullet, the SLR is the clear winner here with 56 damage per bullet over the 47 damage per bullet on the Mini 14. And let's go ahead and break that down into shots to kill on your target to see what that really means for you. Now, moving on to our shots to kill, the SLR and the Mini 14 actually go neck and neck for a no gear or level one gear target, but there is a caveat there. On level two gear, the SLR requires one less chest shot. On a level three gear target, it requires one less chest shot. And this is the biggest point here, one less headshot. So if you have a level three helmet enemy, the SLR only requires two shots to whereas the mini 14 requires three. Now going back to the no gear and level one gear, why I say these are neck and neck with a little caveat is the same reason that I had the caveat on the ARs. The mini 14 does only take two chest shots and three chest shots for no gear and level one gear, but that's only assuming you hit upper chest. Again, if you hit that mid chest or lower abdomen section, it actually takes one additional bullet over the SLR, which would mean the SLR is the clear winner in terms of shots to kill overall. All right, so now that we know it takes less bullets to kill on the SLR, let's find out how easy it is to hit each of those bullets. We'll do a quick little recoil comparison where we have the SLR with no attachments and we'll shoot 10 bullets three times in a row. Then we'll use the Mini 14 with no attachments, shoot 10 bullets three times in a row and compare the recoil. And then we'll do the same thing with a compensator and cheat pad on each weapon. Now, looking at the recoil comparison for no attachments, the Mini 14 is clearly easier to control here. It's a straight vertical up and down pattern, making it ideal for early game no attachments or if you're a player that likes to rapid fire their DMR. Just keep it in mind, you're gonna have that damage trade-off. The SLR, however, when you get the attachments on it, most specifically the cheek pad, its vertical recoil is actually lower than the Mini 14. And it does have, of course, that slight left and right horizontal pattern. So you do have to be really focused when using this weapon, but you can rapid fire the SLR very successfully. And again, you have that much better damage number coming from it. All right, now let's take a look at the bullet velocity comparison for each weapon. Now, yes, the Mini 14's bullet velocity is a bit faster, but that really isn't noticeable on these close range shots like zero to 100 meters. Where it's really noticeable is when you're 200, 300, 400 meters away, you're really gonna see that bullet velocity drop off much more on the SLR than you are on the Mini 14. But there is an interesting difference between each of these weapons. Now, on this comparison, each weapon has a compensator and a cheek pad, with an 8x scope. And you can see when the crosshairs are lined up almost identically, watch how much higher the Mini 14's recoil recovery is compared to the SLR. Meaning after you shoot your initial shot, the scope rests at a much higher location on the Mini 14, requiring more recoil pull down compared to the SLR. So although the recoil is more up and down and you don't have to worry about pulling side to side, the SLR requires less vertical pull down. So there is a bit of a trade off there. And overall, I think there's no secret why a lot of the pros prefer the Mini 14 
because you are able to spam shot a lot easier with this weapon. It requires less attachments. The ammo weighs less in your backpack. And so, you know, if you're really at the top of your game, you can put this Mini-14 to good use. But if you're the kind of player that prefers to take their time a bit more in between shots and you don't want to have to hit your target so many times, the SLR does have its clear benefits over the Mini-14 in that respect. So let me know in the comments below, are you guys leaning towards the Mini-14 or the SLR with the recent changes that they've applied? And that's going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope you found it helpful. If you do need help working on your single tap or spray shots with your scope, be sure to check out my ultimate PUBG scope guide. I'll have that linked in the description and in the top corner of your video here. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like, share it with a buddy, and subscribe for more PUBG content. Right now, as you're listening to this, I'm actually on my honeymoon in Jamaica. I'll be back on the 25th. And we'll cover the brand new patch 11.2 when I get back. So hope you guys all have a great week. I will see y'all when I return. Make sure to keep up with me on Twitter at IMC Dome. Follow my Twitch channel. It's twitch.tv slash C underscore Dome for live streams. And of course, keep it locked here on YouTube. I'll see you guys next one. I'm out. Peace.